I'm going to ask Helen to be our next speaker. Thank you very much, Claudine. It's really a pleasure to be here. And um, because we are an Arab American museum, we are a little bit the new kids on the block. We're, um, I, I wanted to just spend a, a little bit of time just explaining who, who we are as an ethnic community um, and who we represent as a museum. Um, we represent many generations, many immigrant generations of people from Arabic-speaking countries who, have, who became, began coming in the 1880s until the present. We represent over 22 current nations of origin that span two continents in Africa and in Asia, people of many different religious affiliations, and it's a relatively new ethnic identity. It's a very American ethnic identity like Asian Pacific Islander and Latino. It, it, it's not something that it has been around as long as our immigrant population has been around. But our organizations have have uh, promoted an Arab, Arab American identity in the best American traditions um, for the last 40 years. Um, we represent a population that has very different experiences and very different views on their racial identity. Um, we talked, uh, Dr. Price talked about the journey towards whiteness. Well, we have a very kind of complex experience with race in the United States. The very first pioneers who came in the, at the turn of the century had to fight for their white status because of the Asian exclusion laws that were in place at the time. And because they came on Turkish passports, many judges considered them Asian from because Turkey is in Asia and therefore they were not allowed to have citizenship so they fought very hard to prove that they were Semites, they were Caucasian and that they deserved to be treated as, as citizens and they fought that for many decades. Um, and we have really come really full circle in, in our racial consciousness as a community. There are many in our population who still are very comfortably situated in the white um, white middle class. Um, but there, are, there was also a new, uh, several new waves of immigration after the 65 um, reforms. And they, these are people who came with a very different uh, approach. They came to a different country. Um, in, in our United States, we, we dealt with immigrants and with uh, cultural and religious difference um, in a very different way thanks to the civil rights movement. Um, and so there was a pro proliferation of cultural awareness and of religious and, and ethnic um, uh, assertiveness. And so we have many generations now, they're into their second generation, of people who feel that they are very much part of the people of color. And so our, our white status, our white affiliation, and our racial ambiguity, ambiguity is very much a part of the people that we represent. In some ways, we have gone from invisibility um, when my grandparents came in the 1890s, um, it was all about the Ameri becoming American. It was the whole, that theory of the melting pot was very much in, in, in vogue um, to the current uh, phase of, of definite, of ethnic pride and um, wanting to integrate, but also be recognized for the, the heritage and the, and the contributions that we bring as ethnic Americans. Um, some might ask, and our, our museum is in Dearborn, Michigan. It's not exactly um, a, a, a tourist destination. Um, so you might ask, why did we build it there? Um, we built it in Dearborn, Michigan, which is a suburb of Detroit, because of an amazing institution that um, provided the leadership for the museum, and that's um, the Arab Community Center for Economic and Social Services. And Access has been serving immigrant populations in greater Detroit for over 40 years, and they had a very active cultural arts program and it got so in, uh, so much in demand that they realized that maybe it's time for us to think about a cultural center. So the conception for the museum happened around the two, year 2000. Um, and they began to uh, think of how we wanted to frame this. Is this an Arab world museum or is it an Arab American museum? And it was definitely decided on the on the side of being an American museum about the experiences of our community here. Um, we raised over $16 million privately to, uh, to build this beautiful, um, this beautiful building that you see here, which is in downtown De Dearborn across from City Hall. Um, and it was officially opened in the, in the year 2005. Um, 
what we decided to do in terms of the thematics is that um, we wanted to tell various, uh, various parts of our experience in three major themes. One is the story about coming to America, whether, they came, whether the people who came in the 1880s or post-2000 um, uh, post refugees. It was also um, living, the story is living, of living in America. What is it like to be an American of Arab heritage living in the United States? And the, most, and the third permanent um, exhibit in our museum is called Making an Impact. And that is the one that probably is the most, um, has the most aha moments for people when they come to our museum for the first time because it really showcases um, prominent Americans in all different fields who happen to be of Arab descent. And so it's kind of our wall of fame. Um, and uh, it's also, we felt that it's really important, and we've talked a lot about telling stories and, and being part of the narrative. And it was especially important in our community because of this paradox of being invisible for many generations and then all of a sudden being thrust into the political spotlight and to be and to, in, in a sense, be a very politicized uh, culture without necessarily having a way to define ourselves in, in, in one place. Um, many times it was our political detractors who were defining us, or it was people who were, uh, who were trying to paint us as other because of relationships with people in the Arab world. So it was really important that we decided to tell our own story. One of the things about the museum I think that is the most important, let's see if, this is just a little bit about some of the exhibits in the, um, in the permanent exhibit. I think the most important feature of our a museum are the things that happen away from the exhibits and also the things that happen outside the building and in other states. We have a, a, a very strong commitment to national programming. Our educational outreach is perhaps um, uh, the most important in-building program where we br where fully half of the visitors who come are school children. And this is an extremely important part of you know, changing minds and opening hearts about prejudices that people might bear about who are Arabs, who are Muslims. Um, and we also foster, we also are a forum. We talked about whether a museum is a temple or a forum. And in many ways, we are a forum by hosting various segments of the Arab American community, whether they be artists or writers. We have a program for artists called Diwan, which is an annual uh, conference that we do outside of Michigan for Arab American performance artists, fine artists, etc. We have a book award for Arab American writers where we honor uh, Arab American authors um, every year. Um, we also host conferences for Arab American scholars, and this is extremely important because Arab American scholarship is a, is a new field. It, there is no formal um, so, uh, association of Arab American scholars. Most people who study the Arab American community have to go to the conference of MESA, for example, the Middle East Studies Association, to be able to discuss issues of Arab American scholarship and research, even though it really belongs in American studies. But there, there is no separate association yet. But the museum is providing a forum for that. And also, it has a, a, a state-of-the-art research library and archive. And I think the archival uh, component of our museum is extremely important because it provides one place, it's the largest repository for research um, and writings about the Arab American experience. Um, I think there's a picture here. Um, uh, I thought there was a picture of the library, but the, the research library and the archive is extremely important. It, it is a place where we collect oral history, where we collect dissertations, personal artifacts, family trees, anything that is, uh, is available around the country, we, um, we offer to archive it in, 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 our, in, our, um, in our library. Um, the other thing I think that's very important um, in our experience as a young museum with, with a ver relatively small population is our collaboration. We, we very much have, have depended upon other ethnic and culturally specific museums and, um, for, uh, to help us with our concepts, with, our, with, with the building of the museum. The Japanese American Museum in particular has been our mentor, um, and we're very, very grateful for our for our collaboration with them. 
And um, in fact, we have a traveling exhibit that is going to be, um, uh, but one of the ways that we get the mu museum out to the field, and I'm the, I'm the outreach advisor, so my job is to take the museum outside of Michigan, and one of the great uh, opportunities we have right now is a, is a traveling exhibit that is going to eight cities, and one of them is LA, and it will go to the Japanese American Museum, and it's a, it basically is, a, is a, an ex exhibition about the century of national service, um, on the part of Arab Americans. It's basically military service, Peace Corps service, and diplomatic service. Um, and it is, it is intended to kind of undo some of the stereotypes that, about uh, loyalty among Arab Americans, especially after 9-11. And we are very, very excited that this traveling exhibit is going to really take our message out to the field. Um, I, th I think I want to close by saying that we also recognize that there are, and we've talked about this in, in this conversation, we do recognize that there are problematics about ethnic specific museums. Um, in some ways that there is always that fear and worry about ghettoizing, whether it's ghettoizing ourselves as Arab Americans or ghettoizing ourselves away from the general American public, even though we do a lot of effort to have outreach. Um, and also there's, there's, sometimes there's a danger of letting the larger society feel kind of off the hook. Oh, well, there's an Arab American museum, you know, we don't have to worry about incorporating their story into, into other institutions. And so that, that, that's always a problematic. And then the third problematic is an internal one in my own, popu in my own community, and that is that it's a very complex um, population, and there are t there are many people who are from Arabic-speaking countries who don't even consider themselves Arab. So sometimes I find myself convincing people whose family came from Lebanon or Syria four generations ago that they they really will see themselves in this exhibit if they would only come and get past that concern about well we're not Arab, you know we're Lebanese, we're Phoenician, we we don't we don't deal with that Arab stuff. Um, so that that's just a that's just an internal challenge that we have. Um, but I have to say that despite the fears of ghettoizing it, um, I, I, I know as a parent and as an activist, I know that when I see young people come to this museum, especially young Arab Americans who have lived through the last decade of assault on their ethnic and in some cases on their religious um, heritage, it is, it is a place of, of uh, refuge and it is a place to honor the, the true story the story that used to be told in their, in their grandparents' houses, but it's not what they're hearing in popular culture, it's not what they're hearing in the political discourse. And it is a place where they can, they can really feel, proud, feel pr proud, and I know that that can be a cliche, but in, 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 I think in so many of our experiences as ethnic communities that maintaining pride in our children is, is, a, is a very important thing to, um, to foster. And I'll just close by saying that we are very fortunate to the Smithsonian Institution for granting us uh, affiliation status. It has been an enormous boost to our, org to our institution, not only because it gives us a lot of credibility and a lot of legitimacy, uh, we are the only Arab American museum in the country. Um, and we are one of only 140 some uh, recognized affiliates. And to us, that is a real badge of honor. Um, but it also helps open doors, even in our own community, when we go to do fundraising. We tell them, you know, we're an affiliate of the Smithsonian. They say, oh, you are? Well, then they pay attention. And it's, it's, it makes a huge difference in being able to leverage our, our, our future. So with that, I just want to thank you very much for inviting me. And I look forward to our conversation. Thank you.